The three points I want to talk about are one, overall case strategy, two, how this will help you in your summary and final focus, and three, why our teams end up losing rounds even when it feels like we dominated, and hint, it's not actually because of the parent judges. All right, it's because of stuff that we are doing as a team. So the first point is overall case strategy. Whenever we start a topic and we start doing the topic analysis, everyone starts writing their own separate contentions. And so I was, I was going through team docs, especially like a November topic, and reading people's cases. And the problem is that each contention is disconnected from the other ones. It's kind of like one person wrote one contention, one person wrote another one, and then we're all just sticking them together into one case. The problem with the strategy is that there's no cohesiveness in the case, and this means that we can't tell an overall narrative or story when we're actually debating. And so to illustrate this point, let's look at a couple documents. The first is the April 2015 case. This was the first case Ben and I wrote. If you can scroll down to page four, that's the NEG case. This is the NEG case that we ran at Santa Clara University. Once again, the topic is about whether we should commit U.S. ground combat troops to fight ISIL. And if you look to our four contentions, there's actually no cohesiveness between any of them. Our first point talks about detracting efforts from Assad, but then right after that, we jump to increasing anti-American sentiment, which has nothing to do with Assad. The third point is about bolstering ISIL's legitimacy, which kind of is connected to the second contention. And then the fourth contention is just how ground combat troops are not necessary. The idea is that, like, Ben wrote a couple contentions, I wrote a couple contentions, I think we took one from the team doc and we put it all together, but there was no cohesiveness behind this, which means that when we got into the summary, when we got into the final focus, we just couldn't talk about all the points that we needed to. For example, in all of our rounds on the negation, we never brought up Assad after the rebuttal speech. And the reason being is that we found nowhere to put it into the overall case strategy. All right, so now let's discuss what the case strategy actually means. If you go to the sec, uh, let's go to the third doc, the April 2015 NEG case. So on this doc, we decided that we actually need to do something that would be more cohesive, something that would tell an overall story. And so we completely revamped the NEG case. Now the first point is just how the status quo solves. All right, this, this preempted a lot of the other team's arguments about how the future could be better. But then our second point, talking about costs, that directly connected to our first contention, because we said the cost, there's a direct trade-off, that if we invest in ground combat troops, we have to pull out airstrikes, do less airstrikes, and this completely contradicts our first, or this um, aids our first contention, because in our first contention we show airstrikes are necessary, and our second contention we show that by committing ground combat troops, we'll be reducing the number of airstrikes. Therefore, in our summary and final focus speech, we could group both of these points together and just talk about airstrikes as a whole. And then our third and fourth contentions are also grouped, and that's just talking about how ground combat troops will only make the situation worse in two ways, anti-American sentiment and how it will bolster ISIL's legitimacy. So now we have two main story points that we advocated in all of our negation rounds. The first story is that the status quo is solving, why change anything? And the second story <coughs> is that if we change something, it's going to make the situation even worse. And that, therefore, when we went into our summary and final focus, we could just push these two points. And so even though we're talking about four contentions, they grouped into two points. Now the final point on this neg case is if you scroll up to the top and look at the observation. We put in this first observation saying that the affirmation must prove that U.S. ground combat troops will be more successful than current efforts in defeating ISIL in order to win today's round. I feel like one of the biggest mistakes our team does is not focusing enough on the overall framework debate and observations, and that's been the biggest difference for me and Ben going from first semester, first semester senior year over to second semester senior year. The reason why we were able to win so many more tournaments was because of our observations. And the idea is that if we win this first observation, then we're going to win every round because all of our contentions build into that. Our first point talks about how the status quo is already solving, so it's very tough for the affirmative to show that the future will be even better, and the second story shows that if the affirmative puts in ground combat troops, it will only make the situation worse. And so now, based off, the, uh, sorry, based off of these two stories, it significantly helped in our summary and final focuses. So I'll just pull out a couple flows from the Tournament of Champions in which we ran this new revamped case to give you an idea of what we're looking to do in the summary and final focus. So I know Joey's already seen this, but I start off all my final focuses with the three reasons why the negation is winning today's round is because of point A, B, and C. And so in our round against Go Parthi Shaw, those three reasons were the first neg observation, which you just read, second was the ask solvency, and the third was the neg solvency, why what we're doing is already solving. And so those are the stories that I just illustrated, because our observations talk about how the app needs to show that it'll be better. We take that out the entire round. 
But then the third point, why what we're doing is already working. This gives us access to all four of our contentions to talk about in the final focus, but it sounds like we're only talking about one point. So as a judge, it sounds like overall very complete. We touched on all the points, but it doesn't seem overwhelming. Rather than focusing on each contention as a separate part, if you can group your contentions together, it'll make your summary and final focus far better. And then again, in our third round, when we faced this team from like North Carolina, their, so their entire second contention was about how um, the current situation is super bad. They talked about how there are millions of refugees, there's acts of genocide, the U.S. has given $3 billion of aid, and how aid operations could be shut down. But we didn't refute any of it. We just dropped all of those points because our, our observation said the affirmative must prove solvency. So at the very end of their case, they spent 3 minutes, 30 seconds outlining all the problems, and then they spent 30 seconds on the solvency. That's the only thing we refuted the entire round. We just attacked solvency the entire round. And in the final focus, I didn't even talk about the aid operations. I didn't talk about the genocide. I didn't talk about the refugees. I just said, look to, look to the three points in today's round. And the three points which I have labeled here were next solvency, the first observation, and aft solvency. Essentially, the exact same three points that I did in the previous round against Gotha Parthi Shah, we ran that again. We dropped half their case, but it didn't matter because we won the overall case strategy. And the judge ended up voting for us because she said, yes, I bought their observation. The affirmative did not provide enough solvency. The neg did provide their own solvency. And as such, I had to vote for the negation. Are we going over two OC rounds? Yeah, that was the third round against North Carolina. You might yeah. like stand by the side and see what's yes. going on here. Yes. <laughs> I know a little something about this too. Yes. <laughs> okay. And so, the, I guess the point we're trying to make here is that as long as you win the overall case strategy, you don't need to win the line-by-line -line analysis, which takes me down to the third point, why it feels like our teams completely dominate, but why they don't always end up winning. This North Carolina team was actually pretty upset after the round, and they kept asking the judge, like, why did you vote for them? What could you possibly vote on? And it was fair for them to do, because we dropped most of their case. The thing is, when you look at overall case strategy, as long as you win the overall case strategy, you're still going to be winning the rounds, which is why I really want a heavy emphasis next year to be on when we first start brainstorming for the topics, we think about how we're going to do the actual case strategy, how each of your points is going to build up to the overall framework. So just to give one more example of what we're looking for, let's switch over to the April 2015 AF case, the second one up on the whiteboard, and quickly read the second observation. Once again, this is on the April topic, but this time we're on the affirmative. And the essential observation is saying that if whichever side can better degrade ISIL, that's the side you're going to be voting for in today's round. And the key word here is like, if we can show that we can increase the probability of defeating ISIL, you'll be voting for the affirmative. Now look at all four of our contentions. All four of our contentions back up this observation, because we give four reasons for why committing ground combat troops will increase the probability of success. We give the hammer and anvil approaches 84% successful. We show that ground troops can gather intelligence. This will increase probability. We show that hard power is needed. This will increase probability. And fourth, ground troops increase the chance of killing ISIL's leader. This also increases probability. That means that if we win the affirmative framework and observation debate, then we are essentially guaranteed to win the round, no matter what the other team does. And so the first couple times we lost the framework debate, which is why we lost the overall affirmative round. But then we realized that because it was such a big key, we had to really do a good job defending this observation, which is why if you go to the fourth doc, defending the second affirmative observation, we literally created a one-page document with six responses in order to defend our second observation. Because we knew that if we won that one observation, we were essentially guaranteed to win the entire round. And I feel like a lot of teams right now don't focus on observations, they don't focus on frameworks. That's honestly such a big difference. And if you can win the framework debate, you need to set up your case such that you'll also win the round nearly every time. I have a little something on frameworks, yeah. actually. So Isn't one I, thing that we noticed... Can you interject just one second yeah. for my, my spontaneous folks? Yeah. That's also true of extent and concrete. If you can make all of your points congruent yeah. in some way, yeah. I mean, I've, I've noticed, too, that in, in our room, we tend to have like three very separate and distinct points, but I think we would probably win more if we had them <coughs> Go ahead, sorry. sorry. Yeah, cohesiveness, so, yeah. The point I was going to make on framework is that something we noticed at TOC is that a lot of the East Coast teams went, we affirm, contention one, yeah. right? No framework whatsoever. Um, and that really kicks them, right, when we have framework that really plays in with our case and we have a strategy that's not just, here's our arguments, but here's how we're framing those arguments. Um, and so do you, do, do, yeah, can you go back to the, the AF case actually for April? Yeah. Um, so... 
Um, if you go back and do take a chance to look at this, the observation one is we establish a explicit advocacy for the round, which is basically saying we're going to do X. That is, we're going to put in 100 U.S. Special, special Operations Forces to accomplish these tasks, and they're going to do this. So we almost, this, this arose from our, our fifth round judge telling us to run a plan, um, and we decided that was crazy, and so we decided not to do that. Um, be very, very cautious when running something so explicit as to say, we're going to do X, you're going to take X action. Because that's not fundamentally what public forum is about. It's more about finding the right approach to an issue, not necessarily saying this policy option is the best idea. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we just did yeah. that for this topic because it fit really nicely into our case. And it's the only way to win on AF. Yeah. So, yeah, AF yeah. was kind of biased at that point. Yeah. Okay. So, just um, a couple more cases to illustrate the point of how framework can honestly just win you rounds, even if you drop the opponent's case. The February 2015 case, which you guys already have open. If you read the second observation there, it just says, if we can show that more people have come out of poverty than entered poverty due to globalization, the affirmative should win today's round. And we had this one card that says, like, globalization took 1.4 billion people out of poverty. James Chen, decade James Chen, yes. And then we also had, like, the China card, the golden contention, right? Yeah. But we, we morphed it all together so that if the other team bought this observation, it's a guaranteed victory. And so once again, your whole case kind of needs to tie back to the framework. The impacts need to tie back such that if you win the framework, you're going to win the overall round. The final case, which isn't up here, but this was in our January topic, it was the AF framework was if we can increase the likelihood of successfully fulfilling the given UN mandate, the affirmative should win today's round. And once again, all three of our contentions showed how we increased the probability of success. Once again, the other teams bought our framework, and it was an easy victory after that. You just have to make sure you keep bringing up the framework in the rebuttal speech, in the summary, and in the final focus. And so now the final point is why do our teams lose even when it feels like we dominate? The best example I can give you is from the North Carolina team where even though we did drop a significant portion of their case and we didn't respond to all of their rebuttals, we just won the overall strategy and the judge bought the overall narrative. Because at the end of the day, most judges aren't going to be looking line for line. Unless they explicitly tell you that they are a flow judge and they're only going to be voting off the flow. A lot of the judges, parent judges, even like myself being a flow judge, I don't look at specific lines or just contentions. Yeah. I look at the overall feel of the debate, how it's going, which side has the better story. Right. And that's the thing our team can't do if we have disconnected contentions, because then there's no story. Once again, looking back to our April case, the point about Syria was dropped in all of our rounds, because there's no way to tie it back into a cohesive story. And so before you go into the tournament, or preferably even before you write the case, you want to be thinking about the overall strategy of how you can tie everything back together in order to give this cohesive story. Keyword of the day, cohesive, because I've said it like a hundred times so far. So a note on flow judges. So judges, flow judges that have done public forum or that have coached public forum or have been in the debate community for a long time are flow judges. They will see the line by line, but they want to see a narrative. They want to see a compelling reason to vote for the team beyond what you just put down as responses. And so what... I, and I, this has happened, I think, a couple times to us, is we've had flow judges, and this is actually, I, some, it was sometime recent, maybe in TSC, maybe in, somewhere, sometime otherwise, um, where we had a flow judge who said, I don't see a compelling error, I don't see compelled, compelling weighing on either side, so then I move to flow, I vote off the line by line, and I vote for this team. Yeah. Some judges, some flow judges will do that. And in that case, yes, it's very good to have the line by line responses, but the narrative's almost always going to be looked at first, especially with a lay judge who is not going to be seen in line, line by line. Yeah. Okay. So I'll finish up in two minutes now. Just some final advice going forward for next year. The... Okay, so the first point is a lot of people have been asking what should go in the summary and final focus. The idea is for summary, especially the first speaking team, first kind of go line by line, defend your case, but then come back to the big issues in the round. Once again, your overall case narrative. And then the final focus, if you want to look at some of my flows, in each of my flows, I have the three points on which the negation is winning or the three points on which the affirmative is winning. And it's kind of, once again, a story in which contentions are grouped under each other. I have my three points, then I have two bullet points under each of those three main points. It's always pretty straightforward. There's that structure. You want to talk about one of the winning points of the other team, completely refute that, make sure that's not a voter, and then finish with one of your winning points so that it leaves with the judge a good impression on your case. The second thing, um, the second thing is what 
Ben and I tend to do like the rule of two, try to go to two tournaments in a month because you're going to do significantly better at that second tournament. But it's important that in that week between the two tournaments, you make the necessary changes. So if you go to the final doc, the TOC to-do list, you can see that between Santa Clara and between Santa Clara and the TOCs, we had like 10 things that we definitely needed to do. We made sure we typed these out like a few days after the tournament so that we wouldn't forget these things. And we made sure we got all the relevant information. We obviously did a lot more between the two tournaments, <coughs> but it, it definitely helps to create these to-do lists between the two tournaments. Like if there's evidence that you thought that was really good from other teams, make sure you find that in the break. And if you're losing on strategy, figure it out. One thing that helped was the seventh point there, where it's like find a lot of evidence to defend second observation. Because that SCU we lost because we couldn't defend the second observation in semifinals. Yeah. Just basic stuff like that. We also did that like a to-do list for MLK. Similar stuff. Right. Um, uh, something actually uh, as an addendum to that, defi finding stuff to defend a particular observation. We did that on a September October topic as well. Mm -hmm. I think we actually had like a sheet of yeah. here's all the responses they can put on here. No, that's actually a January topic. We did, January. We did that for January topic. And it was basically, you know, like, oh, they say X, here's our response, Y, here's our response. And it, it was the same thing. It was like a sheet out defending the framework. And that's something that you need right. to have if you have a cohesive framework set up at the beginning of the round that you're going to carry throughout the round that is going to be contentious. Yeah. And good teams will see when you're trying to establish a narrative, and they're going to try to cut it off somehow. They may attack the framework. They may attack the points within the narrative. You need to have some way to defend it either way. Yeah. And so you can't just have your extension evidence in your case. You need to have the extension points to defend your framework and to defend your observations. Yeah. Okay. And then I guess the final point is focus on what's really important in the round. Once again, going back to the North Carolina example, um, we, the, entire, the entire focus was on the observation about solvencies, the neg solvency and the ass solvency. So we didn't even mention anti-American sentiment or bolstering legitimacy in our summary and final focus. We just focused on our first two contentions and the observation and made it very clear what our focus was. The judge appreciated that and ended up voting on what we put forth as the major issue.